Hello and welcome to another episode of The Closing Track, the official podcast of Another Ascending Lark, where music and the Christian worldview collide with tumbleweeds. Lots and lots of tumbleweeds. Like, no, seriously, if you if you live in our neck of the woods, um, and if you were driving out on the roads today, um, if you didn't hit a tumbleweed, you're like an amazing driver. And yeah, you have some serious driving skills. Yeah, around here we really don't get snow drifts as much as we get tumbleweed drifts. It's like it's like Mario Kart in real life, where you have all of these obstacles and things that you have to hit. And for the Texas Panhandle, those obstacles just happen to be tumbleweeds. Except, thankfully, there isn't a blue tumbleweed that automatically gets directed at the first person in line. <laughs> if there was a blue tumbleweed that had the blue shell powers from from Mario Kart, that I just would be, wouldn't even drive. Yeah, that'd just, be too terrifying I of a situation. Would, I just wouldn't even do it anymore. I, I just... I just would stop driving and just walk everywhere because blue shells, I don't think apply to actual like people. I think they'd apply to just cars and vehicles. Yeah. But oh my gosh, it was like tumbleweeds are, the wind is blowing like 50 ish miles an hour right now. Uh, Maybe more. Maybe, maybe more. Like if I didn't know better, I would have thought we were under like a tornado warning because we're, we were leaving church and I mean, I'm having to like lean out into the wind physically because if i don't i'm going to get blown on my back and then there was that one semi truck carrying that oh like gosh. multiple tons weighted cylinder thing yeah the, an oversized load trying to get on the highway and i was just like i'm not gonna get behind you or beside you or a hundred feet behind you or near your vicinity i'll just take the access road until i'm past you because um I know that the wind probably wasn't strong enough to move something that heavy. But. But. <laughs> like, I've never seen Final Destination, but I know pretty much every one of them has a scene that involves people dying from an oversized load falling on them on the highway. Really? Yeah. Like, there's one where it's like a bunch of, you know, pipes and they fall off and the guy's behind them and then it, like, goes through the windshield and impales them. Well, that's terrifying. And then I'm, I heard there's like a lot of others. Like I think there's one involving like dr- oil drums or something like that. Oh gosh. Yeah. Ugh. I could be wrong though. I hope you're wrong. My name is Austin. I am the head honcho of this here show and another ascending lark. I am the host who is free from school, and I'm loving every minute of it. And I'm Brett. I'm the other guy here, and. I've technically been free from school for almost a semester. Thankfully, I'll be going back next semester, and I don't really feel free because I'm working 46 hours a week now. But you don't have school on top of that, which is nice. Yeah, I'm about to, though. Well, yeah, you are, but that will... Eh, it'll suck, but it yeah. won't suck. You're, you're not going to be like uh, the, the unicorn that we saw at church today. Yeah. I mean... We, the awkward the, unicorn. The, the awkward unicorn sighting at church today. The, the awkward unicorn is a friend of ours. It's our name for him because he is so or was, not anymore, he was so bogged down with school that if you were to cite him, you might as well have cited a unicorn or a leprechaun because and, yeah, he's just not to be found. And the awkwardness, it's not necessarily that he's an awkward person. I mean, he kind of is. It's just awkward situations follow him everywhere he goes, even when he's like just minding his own business. Yeah, I don't believe in like curses or anything like that. I don't believe in that in that kind of nonsense, but... He definitely throws a wrinkle into my understanding yeah, about the sure. existence of curses because things just happen to him that don't make sense. That I mean, he's like, um, oh, he's like one of the characters in Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events. Yeah. Minus yeah. the fact that his house was not burned down and his parents were not er- murdered by his evil uncle. Hmm. Not yet. Thankfully. Not, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> knock on wood that that does not happen to our friend yeah <laughs> well we got a show great show planned for y'all today uh not as much in the way of news or even really reviews we're going to save that for next week uh, but we do want to talk uh we want to visit uh scott stapp again and not necessarily just scott stapp but uh the idea of uh christian celebrity in general and public conversions and things like that and uh how how are we to think about those things and interact with those things? Uh, the next two episodes are going to be the end of the year episodes where we are going to uh, briefly, and I mean briefly, recap every album that we have talked about on the show this year. And then we're also going to have um, our typical end of the year stuff where we crown our album of the year, which is under debate again, amazingly yeah. enough. I didn't see that coming. 
and I listened to an album this week. It was in my stack of albums that I needed to listen to. And uh, yeah, um, if you remember the episode where I mentioned a certain album was going to be the shoe-in for it, that's not the case now. Uh, a, a new challenger has entered the ring. Um, someone pl- pressed X on the controller while playing Street Fighter and joined the fight. Or put in an extra quarter. <laughs> or put in an extra quarter. <laughs> put in an extra several hundreds of thousands of quarters to make the album. <laughs> like this, I mean, would you say this album is like that guy who you're playing single player in an arcade and you're just having fun alone and then this jerk comes along and just shoves quarters in the machine and starts fighting you without you asking? You know, honestly, I would. I honestly would say that. that yeah. That's how I felt listening to it. I was just like, I'm not going to say the name of the album until next week, uh, but I was just like, this sucks. What the crap? Yeah. This was going to be smooth and easy, but no, now I have to think about this. Now I have to wrestle with this, and I don't want to. Thinking is hard. Thinking is hard. But which is why you, I don't do it. Which is why we, neither of us do it, but we tell you to do it, because we're hypocrites like that. Yep. You do all the thinking. We won't do any of it. Amen. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, but let's do a little bit of news real quick. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do one on a new prize. We what? Have, have new prizes popping up all the time for music now, and it's starting to get a little ridiculous. Yeah. It's like awards. Awards everywhere. The 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 Toy Story meme. To- yeah. Awards. Awards everywhere. Um, but no, the American Music Prize is set to launch in 2015, and the American Music Prize is the brainchild of Scott Murphy, who established the annual Australian Music Prize back in 2005, and its ambition is to encourage, discover, reward, and promote new music of excellence by U.S. artists. Uh, in a nutshell, it's an American prize for, an Ameri- for American artists, Judged by American judges, uh, an article on Billboard about about this, which on paper is not a bad idea, but yeah. I mean, there's the issue of having yet another award in this endless sea of awards and medals and titles and soccer trophies. Yeah. And, <laughs> and a lot of the times when you look at these big awards and they all go to the same people. They're all the same people, but here's the thing, is that this is only for debut albums. Uh, this is a, basically a one-shot award. Either you get it or you don't get it. Uh, and it's for a... Uh, it's like, like the Australian Music Prize. The American version is an art-based initiative whose single goal is to identify and reward an album on its outstanding creative merit. Uh, to quote the article again. Uh, it's basically looking at debut artists with their debut album. So the idea of establishing uh, or further reinforcing, you know, people that have already been in the scene for quite a while. That's not what this award is going for, which I kind of like, but at the same time, uh, because uh, a massive cash prize is involved, uh, the the organization is eyeing a cash prize somewhere in the $75,000 to $100,000 region. Um, I'm just so cynical that this isn't going to be a, a marketing outlet. Yeah. Like, this is ultimately not going to be a marketing outlet where they're looking for the best new talent. They're going to stuff them with a lot of money and give them all the exposure, but they're going to choose the artists that will, like, make the most money from them doing that. Like an, like an investment of some sort. Yeah, I could definitely see that. But, I don't know. I mean, who who's to say that uh, that, that might not happen? I yeah. might be just a cynical old young man. And so I find it kind of weird, though. Isn't the minimum amount of sales, like, a thousand... For them to be considered? Uh, yes. Uh, the recording should have some commercial clout. It has to sell more than 1,000 units and must be registered by SoundScan, which, I mean, 1,000 units, it's a pretty low bar. Yeah, like, that doesn't seem like commercial clout to me That's at no, all. No, I would definitely say that's not commercial clout. 1,000 units is not, I mean, 1,000 units is certainly a lot, but... Um, in the grand scheme of things, I mean... Yeah, in the grand scheme of things, 1,000 units is a, is definitely a little bit low of a bar, Uh I would definitely say that's a pretty significantly low bar, but I guess maybe they're doing that at first. So that way they can widen the net and make sure that they actually have people to cover. And I mean, who knows, maybe an album that isn't selling well, if it's okay, if it's based on like an art initiative, maybe the album that only sold 2000 units is a better album artistically than the album that's, you know, had a relatively solid breakout. I mean, hopefully they're going to do that. It won't be another, you know, Iggy Azalea worshiping award. (laughs) Oh my gosh, the Grammys, yeah. the Grammys. I don't February eighth. I don't want to talk about the Grammys. Let's not talk about the Grammys until February because I'm tired of talking about the Grammys. Fair enough. Um, 
Brett, do you have a, have any classic iPods that I can steal from you and sell and make a lot of money? Actually, yes, but I'll probably sell it myself. It's an eight gig. Oh, so it's not it. It's not the classic. classic yeah, it's one. not the sixty four. Or well, it's not the massive. Yeah, it's but, not the massive one. But but yeah, um, iPods are now selling for a crazy crazy amount of money specifically the classic ones yeah specifically the classic i mean in the the 160 gig model which holds around 40,000 songs it used to be sold at around 400 or 250 a piece brand new from apple but now people are bidding over $400 for it and one went for $899.99. Over $900. Well, under $900. <laughs> well, after shipping, it probably would have been close to that. But No, it says free expedited shipping. Oh, what do you know? It does. That's actually worth it. Yeah, but... <laughs> it's only Anyways. pay 20 extra dollars for shipping. You're spending 900 What's an extra 20 more? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I don't understand why. I mean, it's almost like it seems that iPods are now being sort of hipsterized as well, well it says it says why at the at the bottom that uh they can't produce them anymore because they couldn't get the parts for them anymore yeah which i, I don't buy that there's a part of me that that calls crap on that statement but then again i don't know when I mean, yeah maybe that's one of the reasons but at the same time i remember when the flappy bird craze is going on and they stopped having that and then those phones are being sold for thousands of dollars, and I still regret not doing that because I have Flappy Bird on my phone. Yeah. I, I'm just uh, like, I mean, okay, you can't get any more, but this, this isn't worth $900, and Flappy Bird is definitely not worth thousands of dollars. I don't know. I mean, if I had $900 lying around, I probably would buy one of these because 160 gigs. Uh, it says it could. I mean, that the 160 gig unit could store nearly 40,000 songs. Whoever in their life has 40,000 songs. Unless you are like a complete Pirate Bay addict or you just torrent the torrent, you're, you're no one's ever going to have that many songs in their library. I mean, just wait eventually. You're going to be like, Dad, this phone's not big enough. It only has five terabytes. I can only hold 400 million songs. I remember back in the day, a uh, my very first MP3 player that I ever bought was a Sansa, and it had an... Uh, micro micro sd expansion slot on it and i remember thinking like oh my gosh i can add an extra gig to this yeah. thing <laughs> and now it's like oh this one album on my phone is an entire gig by itself <laughs> yeah um, but if you have a classic ipod um now is the time to sell it if you're not going to use it and make money because even though if i had one like even if though i don't have one i would like one if I had one, I would totally be selling it. Like, yeah, I would definitely. totally, totally be selling it. I mean, $900, I mean, that granted, the $900 one is a, is the higher end of the deal. But so, I mean, even, just even saying 400 Yeah, even $400, that's, that's like a guitar. I mean, a low-end guitar, but it's still a whole instrument. Or a car. <laughs> what? <laughs> you wouldn't buy a $400 car? Uh, no. Oh. I mean, the intern might. Yeah. The intern could use a four hundred dollar car, but he also needs a lot of other things besides yeah. cars. <laughs> uh, he's gonna hate us if he uses. He has. He actually has told me that he hasn't listened to it because the internet out there is so broken that. Yeah. I, which I don't blame him, but uh, he barely is able to get Netflix to work. So if he could barely get Netflix to work, at all, and also his phone's internet is broken. Like his phone literally cannot use Wi Fi oh, anymore. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, so. I'm sorry, intern. Not that you're listening to this, but I'm so, so yeah, sorry. Like, it sucks when you're out I'm in the middle. I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. You didn't say that with the David Tennant accent. I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and it's hard for me to do specific person accents. Hmm, fair enough. Um, no, not much else in the way of news this week other than... Uh, I, I guess we can mention in passing that a uh, pirate bay in Sweden got shut down by the government. Finally, good. Um, it's about dang time because Sweden is like, uh, or pirate bay because it's based in Sweden and Sweden's pirating laws are different from the rest of the world. Uh, their clout and their immunity with the Swedish government finally appears to have run out, and the uh, uh, the government raided their raided their location and shut it down. And to my knowledge, it's still down. I don't believe it's come back up yet. 
Um, now, if only we could do that to everything else. And now I'm gonna get Live a bunch wire. of now I'm gonna get a bunch of emails saying that piracy isn't wrong. La, 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 la. I shouldn't have mentioned anything about Pirate Bay. Crap. Yeah. Um, <laughs> go. Oh, go for it. <laughs> I was just gonna say eh, maybe not. Oh, I don't know. It hasn't happened yet, but yeah. I'm waiting for the day when it does. <laughs> just wait till you say the rant. No. What is it? No. No. Um, we only have one review on tap this week because we are going to be covering a lot of albums, and I mean a lot of albums next week. Uh, do you know how many we've covered this year so far? I don't know. I mean... I did the... I put it all together three weeks ago, and as of three weeks ago, and not keeping in track what we've done since then and how many we're going to do next week to, to round out the year, uh, we've done, I think, 38 Hmm. which for three months yeah. is pretty good considering that over the entirety of 2013 we covered like 75 albums uh yeah just wait until next year just wait till next year and we cover all the albums yes cover every single release that is released on a disc and sold in a store yes we should do this if we had an income why not but and maybe like five other people contributing and maybe like 10 million other people yeah. listening as well because that sounds terrible. Yeah, um, but the only album I'm going to cover this week is uh, the newest release from War of Ages, which War of Ages was one of many uh, gateway metal bands for me back in the day when I was discovering metal. Uh, I credit Demon Hunter for being my gateway metal band, but then I also uh, credit um, August Burns Red, Becoming the Archetype, and Devil Wears Prada, and a bunch of other bands. And War of Ages was one of them. And they... Uh, kind of staled out over the past couple of albums and uh, were kind of cementing themselves as a bit of a one-trick pony. But on this album, they were influenced with the grace of Jack Daniels. Qua? Uh-huh. I was waiting for that. Um, not not the liquor, Jack Daniels. Oh, okay. Um, that's the name of the guitarist. <laughs> but, I mean, it's fun to say that... Yeah. Uh, War of Ages got Jack Daniels and all, all of a sudden became incredibly yeah. better. <laughs> they got Jack now. They got Jack now. Like, they really do. Um, Jack Daniels from one of the most underrated bands of the Christian metal scene at the moment, Hope for the Dying, which, uh, for all of the love and praise that we have smothered on Theocracy on this show, uh, Hope for the Dying is right up there in terms of the underratedness, uh, right up there with Theocracy because of the amazing crap <laughs> because of the amazing stuff that they yeah. put out. Um, amazing crap is a bit of an oxymoron. I apologize for that. Hope for the dying. Your guys' stuff is really, really good. But anyway, yeah. uh, what happens when you add Jack Daniels to War of Ages is you get this amazing, amazing uh, boost of creativity, boost of energy, boost in really everything from the songwriting to the melodies to the soloing to every bit of it. Uh, the album's, uh, the name of the album is, I should probably mention that, is Supreme Chaos, which coming off the hills of their last album is a much needed rebirth uh, and save themselves basically from playing the same thing into oblivion uh, from ashes kicks off with a little bit of an electronic vibe, which they haven't really pulled out before. And there's uh, quite a bit of electronic use throughout the album. It's not used so much that it distracts from the metal, but where it's used, um, it's used very tasteful and it's tastefully and it's used very well to, uh, to build up elements of the song in the way that uh, guitars couldn't. And um, yeah, it gets started on a great note. Lost in Apathy is, in my opinion, uh, the best song that they have ever put out. It is right up there with anything As I Lay Dying has ever done out in terms of quality. Uh, it's got an outstanding, outstanding dueling guitar chorus, um, great, great verses, and a actually really decent solo breakdown combo in the middle of it. Um, Chaos Theory, the title track, has a really, really powerful chorus and another uh, really good dueling guitar bridge. Um, On Broken Wings is basically uh, a psalm set to uh, to metalcore, and it's kind of, I mean, I to sound redundant, an outstanding chorus. Um, really very melodic, very uh, melody-driven, but it's also got some really, really solid screams on there. And then uh, really those are the major, major standouts on the album. Uh, the album itself as a whole is not all that is not as good as it could be but where the promise and potential is, is shown on this album it leaves an impression on you that 
the they haven't even hit the ceiling yet as in terms of what they can go. Uh, the probably the biggest weaknesses on the album is mainly the melody construction. Uh, there are some melodies that are just really weak, and some choruses and some other verses that uh, vocally are a little underdeveloped as far as the melody goes and come off feeling a little weak and tried. And even some of the breakdowns, all breakdowns at this point are basically copied from somebody else. I yeah. haven't heard an original breakdown in years because breakdowns. <laughs> I breakdowns. Can't. Breakdowns. Uh, Aliens. There's actually a breakdown generator now. Like Really? Yeah, there's actually a legitimate breakdown generator now. I, mean, I knew about the rhyme generator but now breakdown generator. Yeah, yeah it calculates like a random breakdown pattern for you because that's all breakdowns are like probably the most easy to do form of uh of metal ever you just have a, a very slow cymbal riding drum lead and then uh, just a palm mute randomness <laughs> it doesn't even have to make sense um and so the album as a whole is not as good as it could be but the solid songs on this album are very promising and are uh, and point in the direction of something really promising down the road. Um, even though I don't listen to the whole album in of itself, I would say that Lost in Apathy, Chaos Theory, and uh, On Broken Wings uh, have been some of my favorite metal songs for the whole year. So great songs, uh, not so great album, extremely promising direction for War of Ages. If you've checked out on War of Ages, you need to check into this one. Uh, the inclusion of Jack Daniels, not the alcohol, but the, the guy. Uh, really, Maybe it's both. Maybe it is both. They got Jack Daniels and Jack Daniels. Hmm. That's an interesting theory. Jack Daniels definitely is what this band needed, and it's the promise here is incredible, and I can't wait for what they do next. Um, so if I were dependent, I would probably have to pin it at a six, um, but that's only because, as a whole, the album itself leaves a lot to be desired, but uh, I want to, again, add the caveat that it's so promising where these guys can go from here with with Jack Daniels on board. As long as Jack Daniels doesn't leave hope for the dying. That's the thing. If Jack Daniels leaves hope for the dying, I'm going to be mad because hope for the dying is writing stuff that no Christian band has written in their scene. Uh, progressive metal core has been done, you know, by bands like me you know, between, between the buried and me and, uh, countless other bands and hope for the dying is not necessarily any different but for their label they're probably the best band on their label easily so war of ages supreme chaos brett what do we have coming out next week uh there's nothing on the list because i'm pretty sure that the releasing season is over yeah uh there's really nothing else coming out this year because as far as i'm concerned and as far as pretty much everybody else is concerned it's the end of the 2014 release season uh so when I review a certain album next week and I include the technical caveat that its release date is technically a 2013 release date, um, I'm taking into account the fact that when it came out, it was pretty much it, like it was pretty much the beginning of the 2014 season. The music seasons don't necessarily operate based on calendar. Things just like beer. <laughs> just like beer. <laughs> it's like it's November and now there's winter lager. What the heck? <laughs> just like beer that's all you have to say yeah just like you can compare beer. beer to a lot of different things i've realized yeah i mean i've been in the in the year or not really even the year in the seven or eight months that i have uh began drinking and enjoying alcohol uh i've found that there are metaphors to beer that just relate really well to a lot of things mm -hmm. some of those i'm not sharing on the air beer because your friends aren't that interesting that wasn't one of them. <laughs> oh. Well, it's very popular. Maybe it, maybe it's one that I'm thinking of that you haven't heard of, but either way, I'm not going to share it on the air. Um, not definitely not going to share it on the air. Um, let's get into the main course and let's just let's just do a shorter episode this week. Uh, we're running really really uh, like quick through this at the moment, but that's okay because the next two episodes might be a little bit longer than normal. Over nine thousand hours. Over nine thousand. Over nine thousand hours. I mean, granted, don't get me wrong. We have unlimited hosting and we have unlimited storage space per month. So technically, we could do it. But, but. <laughs> first of all, I don't have uh, my computer or my terabyte external hard drive probably can't hold a 9,000 hour podcast. 
um, because we record and we record at a higher quality rate. We want to put out a quality podcast and that includes the way it's recorded. And so uh, the average episode size is about 70 meg, which is a higher amount for an episode. But we also want to put out a real uh, an episode that's formatted really well. But if I were to do that and do a 9000 hour episode. I don't think I would have a hard drive big enough. That doesn't mean I couldn't go buy one, but um, could you imagine have our internet and how long it would take to upload a 9,000-hour episode? Can you imagine how much we'd have to talk about to keep talking for 9,000 hours? We might as well just record, like, leave the microphone setups as they are for the next month because, yeah. because Grant is gone home to california so it's just me and you for the next month and i mean the electricity be danged we can just leave these microphones yeah. on for the next month and upload upload it to just the sounds <laughs> of our apartment when neither of us are here yeah. most of the day because <laughs> we both go to work at the same time and you usually get off earlier than i do but and i'm kind of scared of what we might hear if we just do that could you imagine if we listened back to it and somebody was in our apartment talking and we didn't know who it was? That would be creepy. It would be like, we're moving and we're moving now. Yep. Uh, they're like, that. this is over. We're, we're, we're getting out of here. Forget contracts. Yeah, contracts contracts are stupid until they hold them against you and make you pay money to break your lease. Yeah. Yeah. Contracts. Anyway, uh, so we're going to be talking about... Um, the idea of Christian celebrity, and we're going to be uh, looking at two particular people uh, to kind of, I guess, look at them in an archetypal way to for two different types of people. Uh, we're going to be looking at Scott Stapp, which we've talked about Scott Stapp in a prior episode. Brett, you weren't here. This is the episode with Aaron. Yeah. Uh, we've talked about Scott Stapp once before, but we're going to revisit him again and expand on a little bit. And we're also going to talk about... Um, public conversions uh, and talk about just how when a actor or a musician has a conversion story, and I'm using air quotes on that for a reason, in the media, how we kind of tend to just jump on that and jump on it in a way that I don't think uh, communicates what we believe as Christians about conversion very well and just the idea of Christian celebrity in general. We're not going to cover all the bases, and we'll probably revisit this topic again down the road, but uh, given Scott Stapp's continued, I mean, it just seems like this, there's no end in sight to this this, yeah. this downward spiral that he's going on. Um, and we're, we're going to talk about what what's going on with him there, but uh, Christian celebrity like is a super buzzword right now. I mean, David even used it in the sermon this yeah. morning when we were talking about John the Baptist, because even though calling John the Baptist a Christian celebrity may not be the most, like, the, the best use of the phrase. During Paul's time, I mean, yeah. Paul was definitely a, a Christian celebrity, and he even writes in uh, 1 Corinthians, you, you know, what is Paul? What is Peter? What is Apollos? You know, because the, the Corinthian church was like, well, I follow this guy, and I follow that guy, and we do that now, too. Like, yeah. I mean... I follow MacArthur. Well, I follow Piper. Well, I follow Osteen. I was about to say, you better include Osteen in that mix. Or Joyce Meyer. Or Benny Hinn. Or T.D. Jakes. Or, I mean... Well, Benny Hinn is a Sith Lord, so... And you're a Jet Star Wars nut. Why do you not follow Benny Hinn? Eh, I'm more of a gray Jedi than anything. I'm not really a Sith. <laughs> so... <laughs> So if but if you weren't a great Jedi, would you follow Benny Hinn because he's a Sith Lord? Possibly. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't even have a follow up for that. Um well, let's talk about Scott Sapp real quick. Um so you've probably have heard um uh, on Facebook or Twitter that uh nine one one calls from Scott Stapp's wife have been released where uh, apparently uh Scott Stapp claims that he is a CIA agent who is supposed to assassinate President Obama. Face palm. <laughs> yeah. Just just deep deep face palm. And everywhere I've seen this is so this drives me nuts. Everywhere I've seen this, um I've seen that story of the interview from two thousand twelve where he where he appeared on uh Fox News for a little bit, like one of Fox News morning shows, like every single one of them has that Fox News clip on there, like yeah. to, to further drive home the the point. And I'm just like, What? Like what? And now he's also blaming his misfortune on the fact that he said bad things about Obama and that now the IRS is freezing everything. Yeah, I mean, so it's obvious that uh, 
it's obvious, and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, that he's not doing well. Uh, but this this particular episode, I mean, when you know, in the in the prior whatever, he put out the YouTube the videos on Creed's Facebook page. He announced that he was doing a fundraiser, which that fundraiser has since disappeared from the internet. Um, but prior to that, you know, it was just like Scott Stapp colliding with himself. But whenever you have stuff coming out that's publicly threatening the president you've gone too far yeah and now people are paying attention i mean people can talk about the nsa invasion all you want but if you say something in a public sphere and then the nsa comes down on you you can't really you can't really blame them yeah i mean tmz was the one who broke the story and managed to get a hold of the of the phone call but i mean there's there's a line that's crossed here when you start threatening someone publicly, like you're you're threatened that you're gonna assassinate the president, even if you were on drugs. Yeah. During that moment, like that's not something to take lightly. Um, and then also since those stories came out, uh, according to the Huffington Post, a Florida judge has awarded sole custody of Stapp's children to his wife as well. So, um, yeah, he's he's still the meltdown is still going on, and we thought that maybe two or three weeks ago when we were talking, and I was talking about it with Aaron that this meltdown that he's been on would lighten up and, and stop soon. But I mean, it's been two weeks later and it's still going on. And here's the thing. This isn't the first time that he's, he's melted down either. Um, and this isn't the first time he's melted down within a year of releasing an album in the Christian market, which, uh, I didn't know that. And I mean, I, that's just, that's just sad. Yeah. Like, uh, 2006, uh, was the first breakdown and he released the great divide in 2005. Did you know that that album is double platinum? I did not actually. No, that album is double platinum. I couldn't believe that when I read that. Yeah. I mean, not that it was a bad album or anything, but I was just like, Oh my gosh. Like that is a pretty big feat. That's, that's incredible. Uh, especially when it's a Christian market, when it was a Christian market release, granted it got a lot of radio play when it came out. But then when, uh, the news of being arrested for a DUI and uh, later charged with a domestic violence felony uh, came out. The Christian stations were like, yeah, we're done playing this album. Yeah. We should probably not play this album ever again for good reason. Um, and then last year, and we talked about this again last week or a couple weeks ago, the um, that Proof of Life went like on the name. Proof of Life came out last year, last November, um, and it was nominated for a Dove Award uh, for Rock Album of the Year. Uh, reference the demo episode we were talking about that. Yeah. Uh, the demo episode that will never be released. <laughs> I don't even know if I still have that. Um, we talked about how uh, Proof of Life was nominated for that, and we were just kind of scratching our heads, just kind of like, why? Yeah, why? Why was this nominated? We don't understand. Um, and then the fall the fall starts happening again, not even a year later. Um, I don't, I'm so upset about this, like, because I like Stab. I mean, I yeah. don't dislike the guy and it breaks my heart to continue to hear of the destruction that is causing him and his family and uh, the faith that he uh, very publicly professes because, I mean, let's face it, Scott Stapp, during the time he was in Creed and even beyond and relatively recently, has worn his faith on his sleeve. Yeah. Like, he doesn't deny that, that he's a Christian. In yeah, he claims to accept God with arms wide open. <laughs> you're, on a, you're on a roll today. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm addicted to horrible puns. I can't stop. You're on a roll today. <laughs> That's terrible, but really funny. <laughs> um. But no, and so when people think of Creed, which even the band name Creed is, yeah. I mean, hearkening to to creeds and confessions with, I mean, that's an explicitly, that's a very loaded, I don't want to say explicitly, that's a very loaded uh, Christian term, like the idea of the of creeds and confessions. I mean, I'm working, been through and have been working through uh, a creed, if you want to call it, call it that for several months, and um, our theology uh comes in part from creeds. I mean, yeah. the, the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, uh, and, and several other creeds. And so the word, like the band name creed, is in of itself a relatively uh, Christian phrase in of itself. So um, it's so sad, though, to see uh, another, like, 
coming back from like the ashes moment. And now he's going back to the ashes. Yeah. Like, cause that was the whole point of proof of life was he was done with his former ways. You know, he, he was done with that lifestyle and, uh, you know, he's, he's been restored in his relationship with God and he's, uh, going to tell people about those experiences and what it's like to come back. And not even a year later, it's all unraveling again. I mean, you probably aren't that aware of this, but it definitely reminds me of Jake the Snake Roberts, his journey that he's been going through. Jake the Snake Roberts. Uh, explain. Um, basically, Jake the Snake Roberts, he is a former professional wrestler. His big gimmick was he would always carry a snake in a bag and then pull it out as he entered the ring. At one point, he actually let the snake bite someone, which was kind of hard. Disturbing. Yeah, that was back when wrestling was a lot more violent than it is now but if i saw if i saw that happen like if i were to watch a wrestling thing at night and if i were to see that like i would be convinced that wrestling was real i saw the (laughs) video of it and even knowing what was about to happen it was still pretty hardcore that's intense but anyway but anyways and um for a while i mean he was a very dark depressed pretty disturbed person but he eventually found Christ, professed Christianity. In fact, one of the famous sayings of wrestling, Austin 316, is where Steve Austin beat Jake the Snake Roberts, and then the next Monday he came back saying, you thump your Bible, you claim you're um, John 316. Well, Austin 316 says, I just whooped your blank. (laughs) So, I mean, yeah. That's that's actually pretty funny. (laughs) Yeah, but anyways, and so, I mean... He did go incredibly public with his faith, but then a few times, I know of at least two, he has fallen down back into alcoholism, back into his Dr. Press state, and thankfully, as of recently, one of his good friends and former protege, Diamond Dallas Page, has started pulling him out of his most recent depression. So, I mean, this isn't a one-time thing that happens. No, no, and that's the thing, is that this isn't, I mean, as tragic of a story as Stapp's, as Scott Stapp's story is, this isn't the first time this has happened for anybody. I mean, this is definitely not a new, unexplored phenomenon by yeah. any means. I mean, this public conversion stories or public falling outs of Christians has been a thing now for... Uh, for for quite a while i mean and even and i said we weren't going to talk about this but just to briefly use an example even mark driscoll i mean i mean that's that kind of story is anything new a pastor a pastor being uh accused of bad behavior and being disciplined and scrutinized and called into question for it that's not the first time that's happened either i mean if you want to go really far back we can talk about david or abraham or king saul so Wow, the Bible has things that actually speak to our time? Whoa. Whoa. I mean, you think about it, <laughs> David screwed up a lot. Yeah. In very terrible ways. And but he's still called a man after God's own heart. Right. And we I, I mean, the public falls that David have. I mean, David and Bathsheba, I mean, you don't think that word like news of that did not pass through pass through the yeah. area eventually i mean maybe not you know david didn't update his twitter feed yeah you know saying oh my, oh my gosh nathan came and talked to me and i'm so convicted of my sin totes murdered uriah <laughs> lol hashtag yolo <laughs> what <laughs> i don't know i don't know either i don't, I, I, I can't even i'm just um, imagining <laughs> twitter feeds about that biblical twitter feeds Huh. This needs to be a thing. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> You're not even on Twitter. Uh, I can do a pseudo one on Facebook. No. It works exactly the same. No, it doesn't. But anyway, um, so but if you followed like on social media, especially, uh, you've seen the Creed haters uh, commenting on these stories, saying pretty some like derogatory and pretty inhumane things towards Stab as this thing goes down. But the one element that's constantly brought up is his faith. You know where's your faith? You know, what happened to it? Was it even real? I mean, yeah. this is happening for the second, third, fourth time with you, you know, what's the deal here? Uh, and so pu- the, the marriage of Scott Stapp's faith with his personal career means that when one rises, they rise simultaneously and they fall simultaneously. So Scott Stapp cannot fall in the public eye without dragging Christianity 
down with it because the two have become so intermingled with each other that you can't separate one for the other. And it's certainly legitimate, I think, to to ask concerning questions about the status of Scott Stapp's relationship with God as this is going on because, I mean, he's he's in some pretty serious sin at the moment. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and uh, I know Aaron mentioned this uh, – where is the Christian community at in his life? I mean, we don't necessarily have yeah. to know about it, but uh, it just seems like the restraints of the Christian community that should be coming and surrounding him haven't shown up yet, especially considering that he got nominated for a Dove Award. Yeah. I mean, where is everybody? Like, is, like the Christian community has been totally silent. Well, I mean, one thing if you think about it, it's something that, at least for me, was drilled in my mind in youth and some point in college, too, don't hang out with those people. Completely ignore those who aren't Christians. If they're falling down, you can't talk to them or they'll drag you down. Yeah. It's... So this might be an example of sort of a bigger version of that. Up, oh, Scott Stapp's going down. We can't associate with him. It's. I mean, I'm not saying that it's not happening in private. I mean, because we don't know. We 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 yeah, are we very, don't know. We're very in the dark. But I know as far as like Christian media outlets go, because I check several of them on a daily basis. I haven't seen a single thing. I I've literally have not seen but maybe one or two stories. And even then, those were stories when Stapp posted to Crete's Facebook page. They haven't covered a single thing since. The our, the outlets that are paying attention to Scott Stapp's downfall have all been secular outlets. Hmm. So, uh, I mean, where is the Christian community? Where is the Christian community, the Christian music community, um, in in talking about how to approach this issue because people are going to be affected by this. I mean, people that maybe look up to staff a little too much um, will definitely be uh, affected by this, uh, unfortunately, sadly enough. But so that's like that's an example of like the downfall. But let's swift switch gears and talk about someone like like a public conversion story, like someone rising up in the public eye to become a Christian. Uh, Christ and Pop Culture magazine wrote an outstanding article on uh, Christian celebrity mascots, and they based it on the, like, super wildly popular conversion story of Shia LaBeouf, which, I'm not going to lie, I'm not a fan of Shia LaBeouf's recent stuff, but if you put Even Stevens on a TV in front of me, I'm totally sitting down and yeah, watching Even definitely. Stevens, because he was so funny mm-hmm. in Even Stevens. He was, like, I mean, not that he's, I'm saying he's a bad actor or anything, but that the uh, he perfectly portrayed a totally like honorary teenager. Yeah, definitely. Like he couldn't have done a better job and at that. He was pretty good in holes too, I think. Yeah, oh, holes! How do yeah. I forget about holes? Uh, he yeah. was great in holes. He was great in holes. Uh, he played. He was an outstanding, outstanding actor in holes. How did I forget about holes? I don't know. You should be ashamed of yourself. Well, considering that, like when I was in sixth grade, that that was the movie I watched like multiple times a yes, week. That was a huge movie when it came out. That was a huge movie when it came out, and I loved it. I can mm-hmm. quote. I can still. I can still quote most of if that movie. Only, if only the wood <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, stop. Yeah, can copyright, copyright. Sorry. <laughs> Crap. Dang it. Dang it. Um, anyway, but no, Shia LaBeouf and filming the movie Fury, uh, Christian media outlets began uh, reporting some of the things that he was saying in this uh, saying that happened when he, uh, when he was filming Fury. Uh, he became a Christian and not in a effing bull beep way. I was trying to figure out how to read that. Effing BS way. <laughs> effing BS way. There we go. Um, said, I found God during, do, doing, yeah. I found God doing fury. I became a Christian. I became a Christian man and not in an effing BS way, in a very real way. I could have just said that the prayers were on the page, but it was a real thing that really saved me. And you can't identify Unless you're going through with it, it's a full-blown exchange of the heart, a surrender of control in an interview uh, with uh, Interview Magazine. On the surface level, that's exciting. Yeah, it it that, definitely does sound a lot deeper than a lot of other people saying, I follow God, yay, thank you God at the Grammys for making my incredibly vulgar song number one. <laughs> it always gets me every yeah. year. It's just like, yeah, I want to thank you know God for... Uh, the fact that I'm standing here when my song was full of vulgar language and yeah. sexual lyrics. and In particular, I remember watching, I'm pretty sure it was John Stewart mentioning it, and he said, 
I'd like to thank God for making my song I Smacked My B Across the Face number one. I remember, uh, do you remember those, like, stupidly corny, uh, youth ministry posters, like, the one that had, like, the Facebook page for Jesus as a poster? Uh, I th- yeah. I, I'm pretty sure... Do you have room for me on your wall? Would you accept my friend request? I still see those every day, but I know that there's one awkward, awkward confessional moment. When I was the, the youth guy of my dad's church, I went and I bought a lot of really cheesy posters. And that was one of them. Yeah. I, 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 I don't admit this proudly. I admit this with deep, deep shame. Deep, As deep you should. shame. But I remember on that poster, it was there was like an event thing on there, and it said that God was thanked like 56 times at the Grammys. And I just remember laughing at that like... Which God? <laughs> because yeah. God might have been thanked 56 different times at the Grammys, but how do we know that they were thanking the Jesus? Well, it's America, and America is a Christian nation, so we all know what we're talking about. <laughs> I don't even want to go there. Yeah. Um, so Shia LaBeouf, I mean, he's uh, he's more or less have admitted in interviews that in doing the movie Fury, uh, that he has encountered Christianity in some way, shape, or form, and he now holds to it in some way, shape, or form. And to quote, uh, to quote the article um, that I'm that I'm getting it from, uh, and less than 24 hours after the interview started making its rounds, the heavy-handed headlines and ecstatic social media refrains started. Shia LaBeouf had become a Christian, and in apparently doing so, he also became a Christian mascot. Which, it's the whole mascot thing. Like, Shia LaBeouf is now someone we can point to and say, you see that famous guy? He believes what we should believe, and if he believes it, you should too. Yeah. And that's just not a good... That's just wrong. Yeah, because atheists can do the exact same thing. Do you see Stephen Hawking over there? He doesn't believe God exists, and if he doesn't believe, then neither should you. Yeah, exactly. But Stephen Hawking is... Stephen Hawking. <laughs> he also, David also referenced Stephen Hawking in the sermon today. Yeah, he did. And John Lennox. Hmm. Wow. I just didn't, I guess it didn't click for me how many, like, like referencing all these famous people in, in the sermon today, which was really good. Um, and, but what happened with particular with Scott Stapp is like over the next couple of weeks, articles started popping up about Gwen Stefani, Chris Pratt, and Matthew McConaughey, uh, that they were considered converted on the basis of things like Chris Pratt saying that the well-being, you know, praying for the well-being of his child, or Gwen Stefani recounting a story of her son praying for his sibling, and, you know, these real religious, in a sense, but uh, not explicitly Christian so, but the Christian community kind of picked up on this in certain places, and like, oh my gosh, now Gwen Stefani's a Christian! Oh my gosh, now Dark Lord is a Christian! <laughs> you mean Star-Lord? Star-Lord. I'm totally embarrassed to yeah. that. Uh, uh. I perceive that they are very religious people. Uh, I just butchered that. Yes, you did. I'm so thankful that I can edit things. You're not going to, though. But I'm not going to because I said I wouldn't. Oh, I feel embarrassed. Huh. Oh, I feel really embarrassed. But anyway, um, to quote the article again, none of these things disqualify one from being a Christian, but just because uh, Chris Pratt prayed for the well-being of his child or that Gwen Stefani's uh, son prayed for her siblings. That does not mean that they're Christians. Yeah, I mean, Lil Wayne <laughs> says that he reads the Bible and prays every single day. But. <laughs> but he's Lil Wayne. I'm sure Richard Dawkins reads the Bible every day. Yeah. And it gives him more fuel for the hatred for Christianity that he has. Yeah. I mean, we have such a bad understanding of what makes someone a Christian about What happens at the moment of conversion when the Holy Spirit raises us from deadness in our sins and trespasses to life in Christ? And then what happens after that? Uh, Because it's like, oh my gosh, we're going to look at Gwen Stefani, Chris Pratt, and Matthew McConaughey. And we're just going to assume, despite all of the things that they have done professionally, that is not consistent with the Christian ethic, that all of a sudden that they are Christians. Yeah, It's just like... Where is where where is the critical thinking here? Where is the uh, where is the the thought about this here? And I think it, like the article makes really a point really well that uh, 
it's a thing about transformation, but it's also uh, this thing about like this team mentality within the church and the Christian music scene. Like we have, uh, you know, Christian bands who are touted as being like the Christian alternative to a, a secular thing. Like uh, I'm totally blanking on an example, even though there's a million examples yeah. to choose from, but we look at the Christian market and or the Christian music scene and like, the players who were on our team. So when Scott Stapp joined the Christian market again, that was like Kobe Bryant coming to the Dallas Mavericks. Mm-hmm. And like the, this shifting of power because uh, the the status of the Christian team, so to speak, is determined by the members who were on it and not the savior who has saved us or the gospel that saves us, which it's just not how we supposed to do these things, man. Yeah. I mean, I find it very depressing, definitely, that in today's society, someone can say, thank you, God. Oh, he's a Christian. He's with us. But someone, I, will, I won't mention names just because there are so many of them. Someone can preach blatant heresies <laughs> from the pulpit. And then when he's attacked saying, hey, these things are wrong, then the Christian community says, come on, back off, leave him alone. <laughs> right. Or the opposite is true when uh, someone like Scott Staff fails, like falls in the public media, the Christian community, which I haven't seen this in the Christian community yet, um, will be like, oh, well, these are, this is, a, the fact that he's having this public meltdown is proof that he's not really a Christian, like, is proof that he's really not saved at all. Yeah. When we're so, we, we have such a worldly understanding of celebrity that we let the idea of celebrity, like, dictate what we think uh, or dictate how we understand uh, transformation and sanctification and salvation in the life of a Christian when it should be the other way. Because, I mean, what makes a celebrity? I mean, celebrity is the only thing really about celebrity is public awareness. Yeah. Like, like how much, like, not, we're not celebrities because we're not in the public eye yet. <laughs> If we are, hopefully for the right reasons. Yeah. Um, hopefully not because we said something stupid. and Like Dark Lord? Shut up. <laughs> Just shut up. Never. <laughs> Just shut up. I'm so embarrassed. Um, not like... Or... I totally lost my train of thought. Dang it, you made me feel so bad about myself. <laughs> my self-esteem is now gone. Thank you, Brett. You're welcome. Um, like, celebrity is like... It's just... A matter of being in the public spotlight and about, like, a good a considerable number of people knowing you. It doesn't have any impact. Like, it doesn't make your sanctification process any different from any normal Christian. Like, if you're going to be, if you become a Christian, like, let's say Shia LaBeouf became a Christian, the process that he goes through in that is going to be the same thing as it was for you and I. And it doesn't change just because he happens to be one of the most prolific actors in the world at the moment. Yeah, like people, I've heard a lot of people that are mad that he cussed in the article saying, oh, he's a Christian now. He says he's a Christian now, but he cussed. He must not be. I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, it's, I mean, that, I I saw quite a bit of that at first and I was just kind of like, people, do you not remember? I mean, some of them genuinely don't because, I mean, I know I was, I became a Christian at a relatively young age. But for those who became a Christian later on in their life, like, do you not remember still struggling with sin? Like, sometimes serious sin when you became a Christian? And or, dude, are you, like, totally free from struggling with sin at the moment? And have you never done anything recently that's worse than cussing? I mean, in the grand scheme of things, cussing really isn't that big of a deal compared to, you know, lust hatred, greed, all these other things. I mean, we should, it's sin. And so we should still treat it as sin. But I mean, it's, I mean, you're right. It's not like he went out and murdered someone yeah. afterwards, but I mean, it is like still... carved John three sixteen into someone after he killed him. That would be different and disturbing. Yes. And really, really creepy. Yes. Like, uh, that's terrifying. Um, but no, like, it's like, we expect like, Oh, Shia LaBeouf's a Christian. Now we should expect him to like, never sin in the public eye again, even though he just recently became a Christian. Yeah, that's not gonna happen, and we're gonna (laughs) see, even, I really do hope this is legit, and even, you know, 20 years from now when he's doing all these good, godly things, we can see his sanctification has borne a lot of fruit, he's gonna mess up, 
and the media is going to blow up about it. Well, and that's the thing, too, is that we forget that sanctification uh, and displaying the fruit of the Spirit in someone's life is, is evidence of their salvation, that this, that sanctification and being uh, conformed to the image of Christ and bearing the fruit of the Spirit in one's life, that is evidence of salvation. There hasn't been enough time yet for that evidence to be seen. I mean, has it... Was it even a month ago that he claimed to be a Christian now? It was relatively short. I mean, it was about two months ago. Okay. So... I mean, still two... I mean, not much happens as far as sanctification in two months. I mean, maybe he's been plugged into a church now. Maybe he started reading his Bible by now. I mean, yeah. And we, we don't know those kind of things. But I think we for, tend to forget... Well, because here's the other thing. Like, celebrity culture is, like, to the minute breaking news and updates about every little gossip detail that someone does breaking news shia labeouf orders a sandwich without mayo oh my gosh he's a heretic yeah that's terrible um or like um i remember when uh robin williams passed away and this one graded me to no end uh there was a abc article i think it was on on the abc uh my one abc website where uh they had quoted a statement from the Robin William from Robin Williams family asking to respect their privacy. But in the top left hand corner, a uh, live stream of Robin Williams' house, like, <laughs> and I was just like, "This is why I hate journalism." But I'm going to school for it, <laughs> like, ugh. But anyway, uh, yeah, we don't have like minute to minute like access in their lives, but. Because we live in a society where, like, everything is, like, to the minute. Like, we expect discipleship and sanctification to happen, like, in the same regards, to that minute. And it says so much about us as a as the church and as a as a Christian community when we apply that to these celebrity, pa- celebrity actors and musicians and things like that. Because we're forgetting how discipleship plays out in the local church. I mean, discipleship doesn't happen... Over a single weekend called Disciple Now. Um, boom. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my thinking on Disciple Now has definitely changed. I think it's a huge oxymoron to Disciple Now. It's such a ridiculous oxymoron. Uh, but no, like it doesn't happen overnight. It's a lifelong process. And it doesn't happen. We don't see the best fruits from that necessarily right away. I mean, okay. Uh, John Newton, who wrote uh, Amazing Grace. Um He was a slave trader for three years after his conversion. He continued to rape his female slaves uh, that he was transporting on his ships for about five years after he became a Christian until he got married and got convicted that he should stop. I mean, his conversion and sanctification played out over the course of his life. It didn't happen overnight. And Peter had to be corrected by Paul... Peter, one of the inner circle that literally walked with Jesus, had to be corrected in his path. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it happens. And I think the way that we best go about, like, interacting with the stories of, like, Shia LaBeouf and Scott Stapp is to talk about, like, how does discipleship and how does sanctification and the, the Christian conversion just play out in everyday life and apply that to them as well. Because they got lives, they have lives too, yo. Like, <laughs> they have lives too, yo. And they might have a bunch of cameras pointed at them, but their lives still function relatively similar to ours, and especially more so when it comes to the Christian faith. The Holy Spirit does not necessarily expedite their sanctification just because they've got a million cameras pointed at them. And we need to remember, like, especially when it comes to stories like Shia LaBeouf, I think the big thing is, like, we just need to be cautious about what we're saying. Yeah. Like, because we don't want to go touting that Scott Stapp, or not Scott Stapp, but Shia LaBeouf is uh, this, like, new Christian celebrity mascot, you know? We picked up a new one on the Christian team. When, uh, and then, you know, six months down the road, he says and does something that's just totally embarrassing to the Christian faith. Like, never mind, I'm a Muslim. Well, that would be awkward. Yes. That would be really awkward, and that would be... That would be just kind of like, whoa, okay, yeah. that was kind of quick. Um, so much for becoming a Christian. But that's the point, is that... Exactly. That's the point, is, like, we should read these stories of, like, of like Shia and, like, be excited. Like, because, I mean, something happened. And time will tell how genuine it was. 
but because we don't know right away how genuine it was, we just need we we need to be hopeful, I guess. Yeah. Hopeful that we will see um, fruits from these things, and we need to pray for them. Like that's the thing is that uh, we need to pray for Scott Stapp especially. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and as Christians, we definitely need to pray for them. Uh, I just got a message on my phone. Uh, we also need... We're like the most ADD hosts ever. We can't... Is that a squirrel? Oh my gosh, how did that get in the apartment? I don't know. Let's shoot it. Okay, not right now, after okay. the show. Um, <laughs> but we need to pray for uh, for Scott and uh, Shia. And if we see inklings of those, like the first thing that we ought to do is we ought to be praying for them. Because if it is true, then our prayers are strengthening our brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, if it's not true, then we can pray and hope that God will still work in the midst of our prayers, even if we're understand, if our understanding of the situation isn't technically, uh, technically correct, but it's a lack of reservation and a lack of patience that I think is really, uh, the problem with, uh, taking these new Christian celebrities and exalting them to places they shouldn't be. Uh, and then the inverse, you know, when we do that and then we have someone like Scott Stapp have another public meltdown, all of those, all of that mascotting and like building up that we've done towards Stapp backfires. Yeah. Like it comes back to bite us because we said all these things about Stapp and then look what's happening to him now. And so, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, we need to pray for their discipleship. We need to pray for their sanctification. Uh, but we need to, we just need to be careful about what we're saying about them and how we're going about it. And I dare say we need to even call Christians out who are elevating these people too quickly and too soon yeah um that because we because we need to make sure that we are not going beyond what we know and claiming things that we have no justification to claim for uh if time tells that shia labeouf became a christian that's awesome that's fantastic that's great but we can't really say that with any kind of confidence yet like we don't have that kind of confidence quite right now if it happens it happens and if it doesn't we don't want to pretend like it happened only to find out it didn't. Yeah. So I think we'll have enough to be said on there. Oh, wow. We're actually at an hour at the moment. Yeah. Well, I think it's a pretty good show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can kill the squirrel here in a little bit okay. uh, after you give me your record for the week. Well, um, recently I discovered, I mean, very recently I discovered a new drink. It's called YOLO rum. Oh my, oh, you're going to reco that? <laughs> I'm kidding. What? Not really. So just... we were driving to church today, and uh, we uh, passed by a, a van that was traveling, and it had a New Mexico tags. so immediately I'm suspicious because it has New Mexico tags. Yeah. Um, and it says YOLO rum. Uh, and this is, the, this is the thing that really made me confused. Uh, the tagline on it was, you only live once. Please enjoy responsibly. Yeah. I'm just like, what? Yeah. That I can't even. I, I can't even either. I just can't even. Like, And I have no desire to try that ever. But anyways, no, my actual <laughs> recommendation for the week. Lately, I've been watching this anime called Soul Eater. Don't know why I haven't gotten around to it more recently. Yeah, I'm but surprised you haven't mentioned that yet. Yeah, um, Soul Eater, it's a very good anime. It's... Basically, it's about people who, like, there are weapon meisters and weapons. The meisters wield weapons. The weapons are people that can transform into various types of weapons. Like, there's one who can transform into a scythe. There's one who can transform into all sorts of ninja weapons. There are a couple that transform into twin pistols and a lot of other creative weapons. And won't spoil any plot details, but it's really good. Yeah, I've seen a little bit of it, and I recognized immediately the voice of uh, TM Revolution in the first yeah. opening. Cause... And I also found out that the guy who plays, um, dang it, Edward Elric's brother, Alphonse Elric, is brother! in this show. Brother! Yeah. I can't do it. Like, I can't do it the way he did it. Um, no, TM Revolution, I was like, I was in the kitchen making dinner and you were watching the first episode and I was like, I know that voice anywhere. That's TM Revolution. Yeah. Like, he is like my favorite op- like opening ever. Like I love him. Yeah, and it's a definitely a great song for like, an opener. TM Revolution, man. Like I'm not a pop guy. Like it's pretty obvious that I'm not a pop guy. But I'll tell you what, Japanese pop is at least musically. I can't necessarily comment on the lyrics. Uh, musically, there is some really really yeah. good stuff. In Japanese pop. TM Revolution. 
uh, manages to blend dance and rock in ways I have not heard any American artist do. For sure. Uh, as far as the lyrics go, it's sort of It depends on the split. translation. It's either a song that's incredibly deep, beautiful, moving, explores very good topics, or just literal and complete nonsense. Give me chocolate. Yes. <laughs> Give me chocolate. Yeah. <sighs> We, we, we should do an episode on Baby Metal. We should not. <laughs> <laughs> Only if we can do an episode on My Little Pony first. No, never. Um, my Reco this week... Um, hmm, gee, My Reco this week. I said I was going to think of one here during the show, but I haven't thought of one yet. Um, dang, this, 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 is, uh, this is difficult. Brett, what should I Reco? TM Revolution. Sure! That's a great one. I want to recommend the Japanese dance rock artist TM Revolution. Uh, if you are a fan of the Gundam series, uh, you will recognize his work in Gundam Seed and Gundam Seed Destiny. If you're a fan of Soul Eater, you'll recognize his song from the first opening of, uh, of Soul Eater. Uh, and various, really countless other animes that he's, uh, that he's done, he has, he has an amazing ability to blend dance and rock in, I mean, I said this a, a little bit ago. In ways that no, I've not heard an American artist do. Uh, he he really has created an outstanding fusion of dance rock that is extremely addictive. It's extremely well done. He's a great singer. He is a great vocalist. Um, again, I can't necessarily comment on the lyrics because I don't speak Japanese that well yet. But uh, he has some of his stuff available on Amazon. I actually have uh, the album that's got all of his songs that he did for Gundam Seed and Gundam Seed Destiny, Soul Leader, and a bunch of other animes on my phone. So, uh, sure, I'll recommend, I'll recommend TM Revolution. Why not? Excellent. <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess we'll start wrapping up here. Uh, Brett, thank you for taking time out of your Sunday for doing this yet again, really silly, silly yeah. show that, that we do. Um, I want to thank everyone who I definitely want to thank everybody who gave us feedback, um, who's given us feedback over the past two weeks. Um, thank you. Um, I definitely appreciate your feedback. Uh, I promise that I will try to take it as best as I can and uh, receive it as well as I can and consider it um, as much as I can and take uh, any insight anybody gives uh, very seriously. And we, we received a lot these past two weeks and I've uh, been very blessed by that. And I've uh, definitely appreciated every one of you who has said something about it, who has commented on it, who has made suggestions or uh, suggested an improvement or something like that. Uh, thank you. Like I, I cannot thank you enough for that. Um, and as always, like in every episode, we want to talk about the gospel, which the gospel probably more than any episode that we've done in a while has been the basis of this episode because we're talking about salvation. We're talking about faith in the public eye and the Christian faith in particular in the public eye. And we're talking about how life plays out for somebody who becomes a Christian. When somebody believes that Jesus Christ took their place on the cross and believes that Christ is the only way that they can stand before God the Father, a transformation happens that changes from changes a person from being dead in their sins and their darkness and their trespasses to being raised to life with Christ and raised to life with him forever. And that doesn't matter if you're in the public light or if you're it, it doesn't matter how many cameras or microphones are pointed at you. Salvation is to go out to the ends of the world and it happens in the same way. The spirit works in amazing ways and he works by changing our natures from being dead in sin and trespasses to giving us life in Jesus Christ. And so the gospel, probably more than any episode that we've done yet, plays into this because we're talking about how this gospel saves specific people and whether or not the gospel has been embraced particularly by these specific people. But when one embraces the gospel, it doesn't guarantee that life is easy or that life is uh, going to be without challenges. If anything, the Christian life is a life that is uh, marked with, with suffering and trial. Jesus himself said that if anybody were to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow after me. And that is true, again, if you're in the public eye or you're not in the public eye. The call for us to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Christ into eternal life and beyond is the same no matter how many cameras you have pointed out at you. So, I mean, the, the gospel is the driving basis for this show, for another Ascending Lark, for everything that we do related to this and for our own lives. And uh, 
if we can't get to it in the course of the episodes, we want definitely want to make sure to drive the point home that uh, that's, this is why we do it. We wouldn't be doing this if the gospel hadn't come into our lives and if uh, we had not been uh, raised to life by the Holy Spirit ourselves, and we want to see others raised to life by that as well. So, uh, yeah, I love the gospel. Yes. The gos- I want to recco the gospel. <laughs> If that's a reco I can make, um, if that might be the most cliche reco I've ever made, definitely. But it's okay. I recommend Jesus. I saved a hundred percent on stress by switching to Jesus. No, just, <laughs> just no, just no. Um, not that Jesus does not. Uh, not that Jesus. We can't turn to Jesus to find uh, rest amidst our stress. Um, but if you assume, as some Christians do, that your life is going to be totally stress-free because you believe in Jesus, um, no. If anything, Satan hits you harder with yeah. stress when you become a Christian. Um, but it's, but I mean, the promise of eternal life with God in a it forever is uh, worth any earthly trial or tribulation that we might have. It's a temporary, momentary affliction compared to the e- everlasting weight of glory that we receive in Christ Jesus. So. Uh, yeah. Um, thanks for listening again. Um, wow, I did, totally forgot that we didn't mention how you can contact us, Brett. People might want to talk to us, but they don't know how to talk to yeah. us. Uh, if you want to contact us, you can find us on Facebook at Another Ascending Lark. If you want to find us on Twitter, you can search AAL blog. You can email us at Another Ascending Lark at gmail.com. And you can visit Another Ascending Lark.com where we have the show notes for the show and we include all the articles that we mentioned in the show so that Christ and pop culture article that we quoted from in this episode will be on there for you to read as well it's a great article um, and yeah the next two weeks are definitely going to be a lot of fun I'm excited for uh, I'm excited for the next two weeks just because the end of the year is like my favorite time of the year like to put an end to 2014's music season and look forward to the great stuff that's going to come sure. out in 2015 uh, so yeah uh, thanks for listening and we hope you guys have a great week and yeah I don't know what else to say because we've said a lot this episode yep. but not that's a problem not that that's a problem at all yo guys again have a wonderful week